Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen, where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. Today, I'm making some amazingly delicious peanut butter blossoms because there's a special play date later today, and they come together in a snap. Let's get started. If you haven't noticed, I am still in the rental house. <laughs> The renovations are dragging on a bit, but that's how it always is. I've never heard someone say, oh, we're ahead of schedule, this is amazing. I'm really looking forward to that new kitchen. The bowl of my stand mixer, I'm adding half a cup or 113 grams of unsalted butter, three quarters of a cup of smooth peanut butter, in you go. And for this recipe, and actually most baking, you wanna use a peanut butter that has a little bit of a stabilizer in it. So normally like the supermarket brand or, you know, those skiff, skip jiffy situations work well the natural ones that you have to mix 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 can be slightly problematic so just an fyi or heads up let's give this a really quick mix just to cream them together a little bit now when i was a child and unsupervised i would love toast with butter and then peanut butter on top half a cup of white sugar in there 100 grams and half a cup of mm, lightly tamped down brown sugar and you got let's cream this together let the mixer run fluffy lighter color scrape it down whenever you're rolling cookies it's especially good to make sure you scrape things down several times because you don't want to have any bits at the bottom that are like a runnier and the bits at the top are drier or whatever. You want nice uniform balls. Time for a teaspoon of vanilla. In you go. And one egg. Room temperature is best. It'll incorporate more easily. Then you want to mix it up until it's well combined. Okay, you can see the color is way lighter. The consistency is nice and fluffy. Give it a final scrape if you want. You know I'm a Virgo, so it's a little fastidious sometimes. Now that our mixture is light and fluffy and it's been scraped down, we can add in our flour and baking powder. Just mix on low. Every time, I mean. So, doesn't need that much to mix together. One final scrape and it looks pretty homogenous and nice. You can chill the dough at this point, but I want to show you, like, it's actually really nice and the peanut butter does some magic. So you can just roll it up into a ball right away. It's totally fine. So we're just going to go on to the next step, but you could make this in advance, chill it for a while, bring it out. You'll probably want it to come a little bit closer to room temperature, though, because it'll be harder to roll. Just FYI. So now I have a little bit of an assembly line set up here. I think peanut butter blossoms are an anytime treat, but they're very popular on holiday cookie platters. So I have a couple options for you. Number one, and this is the easiest one, is you just roll the cookies out into like roughly one inch balls. Doesn't have to be totally the same. So roll it out, plop it on the baking sheet lined with parchment paper, and you're gonna bake. The a little bit of an upgrade that I like to do is to get some sanding sugar. And sanding sugar, if you don't know, is like granulated sugar, but the granules are a little bit bigger, so the sugar has some more crunch and sparkle, which are things I wholeheartedly endorse. Just roll, roll, roll the cookie dough in the sanding sugar, and now you can place it on the baking sheet. But if you happen to have some colored sanding sugar on hand, like I do, you can use that as well. So just roll it out again, and then there you go. Now it becomes very sparkly and super holiday. I will say that it will stain your hands a bit, so just watch out because there is food coloring in the sugar. Okay, let's do a green one. Plop, plop, plop. I really like the way any of the sugar enhances this cookie because it gives it that sparkle and it gives it that crunch. And it's a nice play of textures because the cookie is a little bit on the softer side and you have that melty chocolate on top. So some crunch will do you good. And if you're doing this, the best practice is to do one color at a time so that you don't end up with like multicolor sparkles all over the place. I like to roll these out to about an inch in diameter, which was roughly 36 grams when I checked it. <laughs> um, 
I just like that size because it gives you a nice little blossom around the peanut butter. You can go bigger if you want. It's really just me being kind of a crazy person. If you have little ones in the kitchen, this is an excellent time for them to start unwrapping those chocolate kisses. Does any other company make them besides Hershey's? I feel like they're only Hershey's Kisses, but there must be like a generic, right? The first batch is ready to go into the oven, 375 for about seven minutes. They're not gonna be done baking because you have to pop those little kisses on top. All right, into the oven. <laughs> so seven minutes later, you can, oh, so slippery. <laughs> Seven minutes later, you can see they've puffed up a little bit. They're ever so slightly browned on the bottom. And all you wanna do is plop that kiss on top and press. It'll crack, it's supposed to crack, don't worry. That being said, you wanna move quickly because you don't want them to harden up on you. These are gonna go back into the oven at 375 for three minutes, so set your timer. It's very important. These are Hot as fire, I'm not gonna touch them yet, but look how beautiful that is. Chocolate got all nice and glossy, and I just wanna show you, these really have to set. So they're out of the oven, they're done baking, but they're too soft to handle, so you have to let them cool down, and they'll set and harden up, just like many other cookies that you've probably baked in your life. Just wanted to mention that in case you didn't know. Once it cools down a little bit, it'll be nice and molten and soft. You don't have to use these kisses in the middle. Any chocolate you want, you could just leave them as peanut butter balls. Candied pecan, hello. Or a walnut on top for some crunch or even some roasted peanuts. How about them apples? So which one do you like the best? I gotta tell you, I love having a pop of color on a holiday cookie platter, but for me, I love the plain white sanding sugar because it has peanut butter color coming through and it's very like, hello, I'm a peanut butter cookie, eat me. <laughs> if you like this recipe, check out my cookie playlist. It has my favorite cookie recipes and you might just find a new one to fall in love with. All right, now it is definitely time for a bite. Oh, it's like I just had a spa day. Thanks so much for watching. If you like my videos, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.